yeah i think it's time that i introduce myself this is my first print so don't mind don't mind if i make too many mistakes uh i'll i'll briefly introduce what i'm trying to do and you know uh i know there will be no watchers but i'll just uh, keep on going and then we'll see where we go and i'm just in the background opening uh which chat i i didn't open it before but i'll just monitor it as well Ah, so basically what I'm trying to do right now is uh, uh, kind of build a uh, retro games portal. So uh, to, to be a very, uh, just to introduce myself, this is my first stream. Uh, I'm a software developer. Uh, I deal with full stack. I deal with IoT. I do a little bit of MLA as well. Uh, I have a nine to five job in an enterprise company and um, it, it's, yeah so i have a lot of side projects going on every now and then uh, these range from uh, very big side projects where i uh, continuously work for it on a month or so or something like that and sometimes it even it is even you know um, uh, very short projects uh, like a day or two i'm building a utility or, or, or solving a kind of a, a unique problem that i couldn't find somewhere <laughs> something else like that and i've landed at such an opportunity right now uh, so recently i bought this let me show you this is it it comes in a box but if i open and show you it's a it's a retro flag gpi case right uh, it has a raspberry pi inside it and i i got this for playing retro games in my free time but there are certain challenges with this one, right? If you have already bought this or seen this kind of an emulator that, that deals with, you know, uh, emulating um, a retro games on a Raspberry Pi, uh, you have a lot of emulators you choose with a lot of distributions to go with. It can be a retro Pi, it can be a retro arch. Um, it can be, uh, uh, there are lots basically. You can custom load your in emulators for different, uh, um different types of games as well like gb or, or nes or something like that but but the problem with retro Pi, which i i personally use i'm not saying that one is better than the other but what i'm trying to say it, it's a pain to get the you know um game rooms from places collect everything at one place and and then testing it out one by one whether does it work or not and you, if, if you see atari i have around more than a thousand games loaded there's no way that anybody would be able to you know test it and the other problem is the um, the file structure so a lot of places you get the rooms you, you put it manually in 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 a place uh, in your SD card in a particular folder and then all of a sudden it's, it's kind of the thing with um, the Raspberry Pis, right? Uh, you might lose it one day and you will never know what's, what, how 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 your uh, folder structure where you lose all your games until unless you meticulously take a backup every time you add a game. Which, you know, some people do, some people don't. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, it's it's like if you miss it, you are gone. You lose all your data that's what i'm trying to build over here a kind of a retro game collection uh, in which you can just log in and you can maintain your game library okay and you choose uh, for now it's going to be just for retro pie but it's like you just choose which games you want 
which is already in the library you can suggest a game or you can submit a game and we will check whether it's there or not and basically maintain a game library of your own you can maintain multiple game packs of your own let's say you select 30 games in a game pack or, or 20 games in a game pack and let's say you 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 lose your sd card right or you lose your data backup of some sorts so basically just hit download it will automatically take the game from the game pack that you have created or the catalog that you have created and then it will zip it and it will it will let you download it okay and, and that way you keep multiple variants right let's say if you have two cards 32 gb and 64 gb something like that you maintain two game collections for each of these cards and basically let's say you you get a new card which is 64 and 32 gb you can merge these two catalogs into one and and then basically you you have everything at one place it it help it will help you a lot to do it so i mean it's not something which is uh, entirely new there are offerings where you can create a game catalog and everything and then but but the key thing which i found lacking was some in some of these offerings you know were uh that you, you cannot make a game library and easily download it. There's no easy way to do it. You will have to hunt for these rooms. You will have to pace, you know, you will have to dedicate some time of your or waste your time in this repetitive job. And that's exactly what I'm trying to eliminate over here. So I've been working on this for around a week or so. And I have quite uh, built some of the logics. Uh, build the user authentication, build some of the components, how, else, how is the UI going to look like and all of these things I've started a bit and I thought okay let's, let's start to you know uh, stream this whole thing and I mean I was not planning to stream it but here it is I have just mentioned everything in a notebook uh, over here right I mean um, but yeah that's the first thing I'm going to do is going to uh, Maybe not on the stream for the day, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see how many of these tasks that I've written down over here is I'm going to complete right now. And uh, I'll, I'll just code it. <laughs> I, I think that's a plan, like chip away at all these things and see how it works, right? So um, what I'll do, very f the first thing that I'll do is uh, kind of show you the architectural decisions that i have taken for now okay so let's quickly jump into the live scene yeah welcome guys i'll i'll, I'll cut to the chase i'll not beat around the bush so basically what i'm trying to do here is there will be a front end and there will be a back end over here right uh, there is um, nothing uh, which is out of ordinary. So the front end will be on Angular, uh, the back end will be Python based. Uh, the framework which I'm using is Fast API. And to store the zip files, um, uh, I'm using S3 for now. Um, but I'm just considering whether I should use MinIO. Um, and for holding the metadata, it's just a basic MongoDB. Right, so let's let's quickly jump you to the Angular template which I'm using. So I'm using something called an ngx admin. Right, it's an open source um, dashboard software, and it, it's it's open source. It's it has it is it has a great collection of UI. Right, I mean uh, if I can go to the demo. Is has multiple themes, but I, what I personally like is basically the material dark. Yeah. Uh, so the material dark is what I like. Kind of gives me a retro feel, and you know, um, and the best thing about it is right, you have got all the templates that you need. You have your form inputs. You have your let's say for example typography, right? it has all of these components laid in over here if you want to include some maps if i ever want to build a uh, admin dashboard right all of these things are here uh, tables pre-grids probably these are the features which i'm going to use when you 
uh, when you will start building your collections in the table so all of these things will come into picture it has already a user authentication thing going on here um, which gives you a multiple strategies to authenticate yourself right so all of these things uh, will will be there so uh, and I'll, I'll show you as well which i'm which i'm trying to do within uh, python it's it's a fast api I, so that's the reason why i'm not using um flask or i'm not using django in this certain case so like it, it's again it's my personal opinion but what i feel is you know uh, the moment uh, you go flask you need to do a lot of connections a lot of configurations by yourself and uh, some somewhat if i like it's it's used in production but to get things working you have to work a lot i mean these are the things a framework should take care of a framework should be pseudo opinionated in terms right um if i go to django it's it's basically too heavy for what i'm trying to achieve so again fast api kind of uh, gives that balance between what i'm trying to do and how easily or how the framework can help me in that it's fast to code it has fewer bugs it's very intuitive it's easy i, I mean this is this was new for me as well but i was able to figure this out, figure this out very rather quickly and again what you get with this is inbuilt uh, swagger uh, which which again helps you in development a lot right uh, again so as i told right i have already built some of these stuff so i'm, I'm going to show you the back end first which i'm trying to do so this is uh, uh, what i'm currently trying to implement it's all sorted out um, it runs on uvcon it's already dockerized here and uh, you know it's basically let you know you know what let me just run it and show you i think it's already running but yeah it's already running on float 8000 let me just show you what i was talking about right if i go to localhost 8000 and just hit docs you will get your retro backend application so what is currently implemented is users uh, you can log in you can verify so the moment you sign up it sends an email using sendgrid which is also already implemented and you know um, uh, as of now it just sends you a token but that's one of the things that will be developing today that it will send you a link and uh, when you click on that link it will automatically verify and it will redirect you to login uh, that being said this the third one is sign up which is pretty regular i mean just pass your full name email and password it will log you up but again you will have to verify your uh, your credentials using the um, a token that is being sent to your email and then you can log in or else you cannot log in it gives you just a sanity i mean i i don't i don't want to get uh people you know uh, signing up without a valid email so that's there and and this is what comes the interesting part so this is all jwt uh authentication um secured and then there's roams so currently what i'm trying to do is uh, i have added some roams to s3 and try to fetch some metadata about it and put that put that up in uh, Mongo. And I, I understand that I'll have to maintain the consistency of that and everything just to um, have updated data in MongoDB. But again, so you can get all the roams, you can post all the roams. Um, again, you can get a room by ID. You can put a room by ID and delete a room. But what I'm trying to do is basically the APIs would mostly be read only so uh i will be removing this post and put and delete because these i believe should be manual from the administrator like as as far as the uh, ui has to be i mean i mean as as far as ui needs to be aware of is the get ones so i'm not even going to expose these ones so this is one of the second things that we'll do today first being the verify second being the uh, cleanup of these rooms right so i mean just let let's get to it uh, again yeah just missed one thing uh, i also have to show you uh, probably the ui which is currently there as well probably just show you the entire um entire flow right 
so yeah uh let me just check whether the uh, these are all dockerized so i i don't know whether mm, these have correct environments or not so i'm just going here so again you know right i mean it was 8000 so i'll just put 8000 over here and then it should already be running yeah so see it's building here so we let it build and probably this will open in localhost 4200 hmm. So it has compiled successfully. Go oh, here, keep it, sir. The default for our Angular NG service 4200. Here. Yeah, I don't know whether he talking to there. Yeah, I think we'll have to. So yeah, so now I have just created an account, right? If I log in, it will not. It will say, please verify to email your log. Please verify your email to log in. So yeah, this is exactly not exactly coded right now. So let's verify it manually. I'm going to open my email account on my second screen. again let's just try it out what i'll have to do is post my token here and this token i've got in my email which i'm not showing you currently but again if i paste my token and execute it will say success is equal to true that means it's already done and now if I log in, it said you you have been log successfully logged in and I'll get inside this. So everything is everything is kind of vanilla here. But if you pay close attention, you will see your my my e email over here, right? And you can change the login types, I mean the theme types over here. What you can also do is you can go here and you can click on log out. So now you are kind of logged out. And if you go here, 
it should automatically send you back to login because again you have not logged in so let me log in again you see it's already logged in and again that's one more thing i've already implemented let's see if i go to this path directly so i mean i've implemented auth cards right now and let's say if you again um, if you are accessing this url direct if you're logged out right if i do this it will not it should not because there's an authentication guard which is in place it will automatically deduct by redirect you back to the login page that's that so let's let's get working now it's also the first thing that we have trying to do is uh create an api uh which i mean we will what we'll do is we'll basically send the entire url instead of just the token <laughs> that's the first thing that we have to do okay so this is the curl this is the data we are trying to send right so we are in the backend again this is the server i mean there are all the all the code for each of these things are over here so let's say and it's, it's all in environment based so you won't see any uh, keys or something else like that if i if i expose that's a different thing i'll have to change it but for now there is nothing Okay, these are the validates and verify i just basically have to check the utils yeah these are the two things so as you see i'm just sending the verification token over here but what i have to figure out is i have to send a link which which people can click right okay so let me just design a basic email send a, an html page instead of a normal text right so let's let's search I know it's possible but again you will have to send an html i'm right now sending if you take a look at it i'm just sending a text slash text slash plain that's what i'm going to do So I think this is it. This is what I'll have to do. Content that type has to be equals to text HTML, and the value has to be the tags which I want to send. Right. So I'm just going to change HTML, right? And this has to be replaced with a HTML form. I'm just going to build a page. Nothing too fancy. Or let me do that fancy. Okay.
I think I like this. I think I like this. Let's let's emulate this, right? And let's use this. Let me create this image page. Adding white space. it runs so what I'll do is I'll just try to open this in chrome that looks kind of good this is a good starting point right uh, now I have to templatize it I'll just do nothing I'll just keep this as it And it plays. For the information, so we'll just we are just going to need one one more. Five, one step away from using retro. So this should be it. I think this last VR is not needed. Right? And I have to add validations as well, but for now let's let's go ahead with this. I'm just getting the verification token right now. And I have one more thing with me, which is my API architect, right? Which it has to make, it has to be a post call. Hmm. I just convert it to a get call. That would be way easier, right? I'll, I'll I'll have to just remove all these complexities over here. I think that's a better option. Convert it. Right. And 
I would need a verification ID. Fit and ID has to be a verification ID. And I think the logic would be the same. Logic would everything will be same. But now, here's the problem. I'm sending the entire email verification here, and then using the verification ID over here. Okay, I I think you should be token, not ID. That's a great part. So let's say we remove this, and let's see what does it do. I think I can just get away with it. I don't need it. Right? I mean, what if I just change this to verification token? And remove this. Basically, what it does is it finds the user with that verification token. If the user is found, it says a it does yeah, we don't even need this it's just found token and returns trolls return false so basically just to see whether the user is found or not if it is found then we just you know i mean we update the user data based on the verification token basically it does nothing but again you just update the verification data basically set it to true right if you go back you see email verified solo true it will save it and it will just return success or else it will return false right i mean again uh, it should be pretty simple i'm just going to comment this for now and see whether this is running yeah see the startup is complete okay what i'm going to do right now is again i'll just i'll just the user be verified this is MongoDB where I'm storing it, right? So if you see the users, it is true. I'm just going to edit it, saying it's not yet verified. And once this is done, I might try to log in. And it should say, it should tell me to verify it. Yeah, it's very, it's asking. Again, uh, this is done. Now let's go and let's take the same way. If refresh this, this has got to be a get call now. Application. I'll tell you why I'm trying to do it. Right? Okay, I do a get and execute. I get an internet, there's something wrong. Oh, I think I made a typo. There's no email verification. I'll have to send this instead. So, that's done. Right now. Yeah, see, it's giving success right now. So, that's great. Now, Now, I'll tell you why I did that because now it's very easy for me to create the string it's very very easy right so now let's go here it's 
um, and put you will send great and just put a paper link and get some and just do a dot format to a verification token right but apart from this what I have to do is to take everything from here and I know I'll have to templatize this one as well but again one the moment i post this i'll have to replace this by by the actual domain name right so that would be able to do it and i have to again do the redirect back to the host as well so i'll do that that should not be an issue but let me test this out as first right okay let me delete this user so once you delete, I'll have to register again. Now that I've registered, I should be getting a mail. Let me this time see if I can show you how will the email look like. Oh, I made a mistake. That's fine. That should be easy enough to fix. Yeah, so actually, I'm using the async version. So this should be it. Right. Should work now. Ah, have to do. What set me back by? The hyperlinking doesn't work. What if I? I don't know. Email. Text. Should work. Ah, believe me, I've left this game for so long. I don't even know. That's fine. Again. Oops. 
Hmm. Oh, so it works. Right? I'm just going to add it. Yeah. Oh no. Not here. It should be here. Copy this. Is here, it's here. It's not. Right. It should be. This like this. I run. <laughs> Very simple. To begin with. Very, very simple. this go back put the user here and a email started So I'll just show you how the the snippet for you guys. It looks like this currently. My Gmail, right? And it gives me a clickable link. So if I click on it. It gives me success very good but what i want to do is redirect them back to an auth login page right the moment you do that so i'll have to find out how to redirect to a page in fast api okay we'll figure this out and then we will kind of Take a small break. Hopefully quite. I know there are two viewers. I don't know who, who, who are you guys, but hope you find this interesting. And this is my first stream. I don't know much about this. So if you have anything to any feedback or comments, it's, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Redirect response. I think we can use this. I think I'll have just to do a response redirect instead of yeah. once redirect over here. Let me just remove this, get this over with. Right. So what I want to do here is I want to return in front of success equal to true. Uh, just to log in because it has already been done, right? For now, let, let it be just the login. Let's add the import over here. Okay. And the other thing which I had to take was the response redirect. Right. Oh. But can I? Okay. Let's, let's try. I mean, let's try. Let's try this. Uh, 
there was something very bad here which I found. There should be else over here, which I completely forgot. Oh no no, it's not 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 find it three ideally. Made it spawns here, return here for the URL. I'll have to point to the path URL. Login. And hope to what it works. <laughs> okay. Let's try this. And yeah, it does. Let's try that. Let's try an end to end flow. This works. I just tested it in another monitor, but yeah, let's try that. I'm here. Let me just delete my user. Delete my user. Go back. Register my account. I have to edit the terms and conditions as well, but that's fine for now. Okay, I should have got a mail. Yeah, I got a mail. And okay, what I'm trying to do over here is. I think I can show you because anyways you will be getting this mail yeah so here it, 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 it looks like right like this and this is what it looks like zero minutes ago yeah this one if I click this, it will automatically send me to login. Pretty great, right? It's it redirects, it works. So now, I, what I have to do is just login. It should work. Yeah, ah, it is. So that's one thing that we had to do. So we have to also handle the um, negative ones as well. But uh, yeah, we'll do that. Let's take a break. Let's call it five. Let's call it ten. We'll be back.
Put them back, please. Yeah. So now I think let's do some cleanup as we said, right? Um, and then we'll, we'll organize our achieve. I mean, what we have to do as well. So as we said, I just have to put them back. Uh, we we discussed right. I mean, we'll, we'll remove the post call. It will remove the put. Will remove the read. We just want to get the ROM data instead of everything. I'll show you what how this works as well. But let me just clean it up a little first. Okay. Mm. So go here. Install ROMs. Put your ROM. Get all ROM. Get ROM by ID. We'll add get ROM by group as well if we have time. I'll show you the data model first, but again. <laughs> yeah. We don't want this. We don't want digit as well. I don't want them updating this as well as of now. I don't know. I'll need that thing in future, but not right now. <laughs> Dome. Ah, this is much. We don't need the update or model. Don't need this. I'm coming to database. Yeah. I want to retrieve room. We don't want to add room. Want to retrieve room by ID? That's fine. We'll add by name as well. Delete. We don't want to delete. We don't want update as well. So this is now pretty much cleaned up, and this should run pretty fast. Yeah. Application setup is complete. Let me just refresh. Yeah, see, we have two gets only. Wait. Let me just try it out. So see, it gives you not authenticated. So you just have to authenticate first. Yeah, and just authenticate by swagger only. Ah, let me put a double password. which I'm going to as incoming password yeah I got this now I have to verify but instead of just verifying let's just do a little shortcut and edit this document and saying that my email verification is true Once I have this, and log in. Put my password with as. Get my access token. And authorize myself. Authorize. Right now, I close and I do execute it. Oh, this is what? Hmm. Logged in. Is there any error? No, oh, it just says for the.
oh i haven't feel fulfilled it yet so okay i have something which probably i can't show you right now because i would have my keys over there hard coded but let me check again uh yeah no i don't think so i have i have ids over here yeah, so basically i've added the most of the rooms in my aws s3 bucket right and um, and what it does is currently is basically takes all the room data puts it in in a room uh collection with a key value and and a blank metadata so i can populate my db it also populates my db uh, and it's all config using decouple right so i think i can show this to you but basically it's very simple script that i made so i'll just stop this and run my python utils slash hit mango everything goes fine it should work yes we've inserted 224 records over here you see and now i'm going to run my application again and you see i was getting empty list right but now if i execute should get a lot of game rooms see all these are in s3 all of these are in s3 and there's a name associated and there's a group associated so these are the two things now what i want to do is i want to implement a search so somebody if somebody types it um i would get to know okay which of them are basically belonging to that name or i can type in a group and using that group you can you can do a group search right so these two things let's let's implement and see where we go i think these two will make it as a we don't need this email or html anymore it's done okay the server go to roam routes again get rooms get rooms by id and then we have to have a get rooms by name Then I said a drive room by ID. We'll do a search. Search room name. find one now we have to find contains right which contains a name like that okay so what we are using is called as motor mongodb search the property contains that is what i want Oh, Google is giving me hell on this. I'm not a robot, I'm a human. <laughs> a reference
can do something like this. Something. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the search. Yeah. I don't want to do a sort thing. Let's see what we mm -hmm. The reason? Oh, oh. No, 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 no. This is such a problem. It says that this one, this variant will uh, find what does it handle case insensitivity. I don't know. Yeah, this case insensitive version is this. Then let's use this. Let's use this instead and see how it behaves. Because at some point of time, I'm planning to put indexes as well. Let's do this. My column name would be, or my property name would be again uh, for the rooms, right?
name this name will just have name let's try to find something let's try havoc let's hard code it now print it it gives an errors but not yeah of course of course I'll paste this remove this and you speak drive room search room by name I guess I didn't. indicated I should have indicated myself <laughs> my password was dummy password Copy. Not right. Surprise. Those. This execute. Here, I I was expecting that to be honest. Havoc is not an valid object ID. I think I will only get query parameters over here. I'll have to search for query parameters. like this and add some this search this this is much better I don't want to do this here I don't want to put anything Thank you. 
Refresh my swagger. I'll try it again. I'll search from my name. At least it's got something. I just printed. Facing by your motor person, it is not subscriptable. Actually, did but what is was not able to do was kind of 
to a subscript of this. Search behind the level. But that we should be able to handle. If we can get pressure. We need a room cursor helper. Check this. And it's there are multiple. And then why not just add this like here? I can do this right. all of these rooms here and if rooms and length of rooms is greater than zero always be something just do a check it makes sense now I'll stop right here I, I consider this even if we are able to solve it <laughs> it does work like that it's perfect so we are now able to search my name I think we have not parameterized yeah we have still not parameterized Name. Should give a havoc. If I remove a C, it should still give me havoc. If I move this to H, it should still give me havoc. I give a HA. Get multiple ones. Let's select Mario. Room doesn't exist. Mm. In ball. No. The game, please. You don't even have factory. <laughs> okay, let me set something from here. Something random. Let me search for a basketball. Yeah, definitely it works. Gives me the group, gives me the name, everything. Would I do a group as well before I log off? Because I think I still have half an hour. I'll do a group as well now. Get room by name, get room by group. Do a cleanup. Same thing. But this will be a group. Right? And this should be two. Be a group name.
This should also be a group name. Probably I'll just change this to exact match, but I'll have to see. But I'll take a call when I actually, ah, when I actually kind of do the UI integration, I'll change this on the fly. Let's see how it works. For that, this is very important. I don't want to reopen again. Let's let's refresh. Oh, there's a collision. should be I should not collide let's let's get us a group Atari 2600 let's get our indicate ourselves Right out. Group name. Oh, oops. Skip. <laughs> yeah, we got it. I think let's stop here. And actually, like we. So that's what I'll do. I think it's a better idea to put a hack MD document, put all that I want to do in one place, and then let's check them off together once we do this. So I'm going to stream this uh, whenever, I'm, whenever I'm going to code. So I put the, I will be streaming on Mondays, uh, Fridays, and Sundays. If I get time in between, I will I will code then as well. But I have like I'll try to be consistent. I'll be consistent with Monday, Friday, and Sunday. Yeah, and the timings are there, um, which has the schedule, so all good. And I also have to work on this chroma cam issue that that is coming up. I'll probably just leave the whole uh, background thing. I'll just keep whatever it is, and you know, and this would should be sorted out. Another thing which I'm planning to do right now is kind of ramp up my. Themes which are you are saying these are free themes probably I just designed it by myself once at a time at some time in between I think that should solve it so for now yeah I think let's wrap it up thank you this has been great I mean just just please give me a feedback because this is something new I'm trying and first time I'm trying on Twitch uh, I've done before on um uh youtube but i didn't feel like that so i think i'm going to try out twitch and stay faithful as long as i can thanks guys we'll, we'll complete this tutorial.